Well, I'm life with this is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Don Long. Don, are you ready to do this? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Don is a best-selling author. He's a speaker, a peak performance consultant, helping people and organizations reach their highest potential. Don, excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, why you do what you do. Well, uh, over the last almost 40 years now, I've built several different companies. And uh, as of the end of 19, I sold the last company that I led. Um, have two uh, grown girls that are on their own in business. Um, beautiful wife, live in North Carolina and just finished building a, a, a brand new home about six, eight months ago. And so life's pretty good. I love it. And from a business standpoint, what are you working on? Well, you know, right now I, I, I love, I love bringing my, my key is, is bringing transformation. Um, and I know some people use that word, but for me, defining transformation means that I like coming into either an individual's business and our uh, corporate structure and changing some of the major thought processes that causes people to for lack of better words, get an epiphany, the light bulb goes off and suddenly they were, and I like to use the metaphor, they were a caterpillar. Now they are a butterfly as a team organization or individual. And I really like to drill down in, I love working on the tools of the business and my new product, world-class business systems definitely works on the tools. But what I've found out over the 40 year period of, of businesses and people and different things is that most business is 80% of business is built around psychology and are the power of what you bring to the table as an individual. Then the tools are, are the ones that you need. I, I, most people want to work on the tools 80% of the time, and they only want to work on themselves 20. I try to reverse the order. I try to get to the heart of the team or the individual that I'm working with. And I use the disc profile a lot in that process just to drill down to be able to create some common ground with the individuals that I'm working with or the teams so that I know how they're coming from, how they're communicating, how they're able to receive communication. And in that process, you, you'd be surprised because most people, most people don't even know what their strengths are. They don't know what their giftings are. And it's like, well, why is that important? Well, if you don't know that, you don't know the basis of what you bring to the table. And, and how to implement that to actually bring a product to a consumer or help your clients or whatever it is that you're, the results or product that you're serving your clients with. And so in, in that process, that's what transformation looks like to me. And I know I've kind of went uh, around several different ways, but it really is the basis of working on you mostly and then the tools secondary. It is a, uh... When you put it like that, it makes sense, but we're so accustomed to wanting to find the next, you know, I'm just going to create a new habit or I'm going to do this hack, but really the 80% of the work is really, I need to figure out me and how I am communicating and what I'm good at and what, 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 what where I need to, I, I guess, make changes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other piece too is it's great when I get to work with teams of people, um, individuals as well. But the, the interesting thing about the team dynamic for me is that in the last company that I ran, I did what, what was called a corporate disc test. So we didn't just do everyone that was hired at a management level or above. They were individually tested before I would hire them to see if they fit the role that I wanted to. Then the secondary piece was is once I had the, the primary team I probably had, well, I had three to five people in my inner circle, and then I had a dozen people that I would consider that were right out, out in the next layer of circle. Um, that whole group took, a, took the corporate test, and we took our corporate DNA, and we figured out, wow, we have weak spots everywhere. And the reason was, is that we ended up hiring people just like us. Sound familiar? <laughs> so we hire people just like us, right? Well, what I realized is, is that I needed other people to do different things in the organization. For instance, my VP of HR was the only person in our profile that tested in the bottom part of the quadrant. 
And that was wonderful because that's where she fit. It was great for her thing. But I had other holes in my organization. So when I work with people, what I what I realize is, is that your strengths are where you're the most alive and most powerful. Your weaknesses are never, ever going to be any good. And I love what John Maxwell says. He says, once you find out what your strengths are, only work on those and never work on your weaknesses again. What you have to do is employ other things to cover your weaknesses. And at a corporate level, when you do that, you start seeing the the, the you start seeing the engine sing at a at a at a smooth level. You can't even hear it run. It runs so well because you have people operating only in their strengths. And the last company that I ran, my goal, and after, after learning to do this testing, my goal was to always pull the greatness out of other people, and then where I was weak, cover it with their greatness. And then that way, as an organization, you always look powerful before your clients in a good way. And you're also, people become fully alive. You know, think about it. When you're living out who you are at a core level, and it's and it's full, it's fully you. It's not something you're superimposed on by society or something your boss wants you to do or some somebody else wants you to do, but it's really you. That's when you're most alive. And to me, that that's that's what makes working in business so great, you know, with people is to see that and see that light bulb come off in people and in, in, in individuals and then see people's strengths. Because see, once you once you get this, I mean it's it's really simple. You'll just work on what you're good at. And what and, and I realize when people are listening to this, well, I'm one person and I have to do everything. I get it. When I began the companies that I began, uh, I had to do what little bit of HR I could do, but I was never any good at it. So I, the, the, the goal is to focus on what you're good at, build a big enough base so you can hire the individuals to fill the roles that they're wonderful in and that you suck at. Trust me, you'll be happy you did. I love it. How do I know if I'm a good communicator? Or how do I know if I'm bad? That's a good question. So the power of communication can be distilled down in one statement. You do you have you have more than one kid? I do. do have, okay. Do. So you understand this as a parent. Anybody listening that's a parent knows that if you have more than one child, they are completely different. It's it's sometimes amazing how they can be so different coming out of the same parent, right? My girls are like day and night. They they do have some similarities, but they their personalities are almost completely different, right? Well, what you have to learn in communication is really simple. You want to communicate to people the way that they need to receive communication, not the way you want to give the communication. And it's it that statement is so powerful if you just let it sink in. But here's the challenge: when you get under pressure in a situation with communicating to people, you typically always revert back to your style. That's just the way it is because you're comfortable with that, right? That's who you are, right? But you have to challenge yourself. If you want to be a great communicator, start working on this. When you get into heated situations at work or with your staff or with the client or whatever, or maybe even with your children, try it with your children because that's where it works. If, you, if it doesn't work at home, it's not going to work in the corporate world. Let me tell you that. And so what you find is, that, okay, wait a minute, hold on, take a breath. How do they need, what, what's, what's happening here? Why am I missing the mark with getting the point across? And I can tell you 99% of the time it's because you are forcing your style of communication upon someone who needs to receive a different style of communication. And the reality of it is, is if you look, there's lots of these personality profile things, but I love the disc because there's only four. So you don't have to worry about dozens. There's four quadrants. And when you find out who you are in that, in that piece, then you know how you communicate, you know, and, and it's really simple. It's not, it's, it's not that hard. Then when you run into other people, including your own family, and they are a, let's, let's just take a, for instance, I'm a D and I have part I. My wife is an S, which is in the bottom quadrant, bottom right quadrant of the thing. We complement each other well because we're a little bit opposite in some areas, but then we're alike in some areas. But if I'm not careful, I will communicate at her instead of to her because my style is moving toward you. I'm a moving toward person. Well, if you're a moving away from person in your communication style, then suddenly we're not, we're not communicating. We're just talking at each other and you're not getting what I'm saying and I'm not getting 
that you're not getting what I'm saying. And then I get frustrated as a leader and suddenly we have a problem in paradise, right? And so the challenge is always go back to that first statement. You wanna know how you're a good communicator. It's simple. People are able to receive what you're saying because you adapt to the way they need to hear it, period. It's no more difficult than that. Don't make it any more complicated than that. And anytime your point's not getting across or you feel like it's not, there's not something wrong with the other person normally. It's you. And just, just take it back to you. Take responsibility for it. And then sometimes it is other people's problems. So I will say that. Okay, I'm not, I mean, you can't discount that. But I would say most of the time, if we use the 80-20 rule, which is always right. 80% of the time, if your communication is not being received, the problem lies with the way you're trying to give it to someone who can't receive it in that way. Like, why doesn't this moron understand what I'm trying to tell them? Like, well, it's, it's not, it's, he's not, he or she is not the moron. It is, it is me. So how do I, it makes sense that, 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 that within my organization that we can all spend time and do an assessment, do the disc. And so I can actually know this is how Don likes to communicate. So I can do a better job uh, communicating information the way he wants to, needs to receive it. What about with customers, somebody I might have a short interaction with, how can I, how can I know? Well, the key with, with, with clients is this. What I try to, uh, especially with the salespeople, they're usually your front lines dealing with the client. So what I attempted to do in our in our sales team meetings when I would talk to them is like, okay, they, the, the first thing is knowing who you are, which is where we started at, right? So my sales team all knew what part of the disc they were. They knew their strengths, okay? And they knew their weaknesses. But the reason that you tell people their weaknesses or the disc test will tell you that is that you know how you act under pressure. That's where your weaknesses show up, right? But you want to stay in your strength zone. So once, let's say I had a salesman, his name was Billy. Um, he knew he's a DI or he's probably an ID. Well, he's really a likable person. He's like the life of the party, okay? So when he goes out to communicate to clients, he has to know, and you will, you can pick up on these things in a like about a two minute period whether you can almost pick your clients out by two references, two frames of reference from the disc. The top quadrant is fast. Just, just you, we'll just use this because we could go on for hours, but I'll just use two simple things. When you're communicating to a client, if they are fast in their language, their tonality, their movement, they fit in the top quadrant, which is either a D or not, okay? If they are slower, methodically, more thought-driven, less verbal, and when they do use verbs and words, they're more slow. They're going to be the bottom quadrant. So immediately, if I know if you're in the top or the bottom, I immediately know almost with inherently how you want communication. If I drop down to the bottom quadrant, which is the C and S, my best friend is a C and my wife is an S, I know how they want to be communicated to. So when I drop down with them, if I really want to communicate to them like they need communication, what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slow my language down. I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to let them have a chance to think and digest what I'm talking about. See how I slow my language down? Mm -hmm. Typically I'm fast. But if I go to the other quadrant and they're all running 100 miles an hour, that's the way I'm going to communicate to them. And it's really simple with a client. You can really, because you, you know, we used to do this at work all the time. We would say, okay, which one's your children? Well, I would always challenge my my staff, what what your how do your children rate in the disc? Because if they could figure out how their children re rate in the disc, then when they go out in public to meet new people, a client, they're gonna in 60 seconds, they're gonna know, okay, this person really needs for me to slow down, or this person needs more animation and more pull them in you know and and it, it's not any more complicated than that it's because it's like the clients are going to fit in one of those levels they're going to fit in the bottom or the top and if you can figure that out then the other pieces of actually figuring the quadrant out will come if you just have a communication with them so you talked about making that meta metamorphosis from uh from the caterpillar to the butterfly and it almost sounds like you can make that pretty quickly once you just are aware of that fact that you need to communicate the way that your 
the person you're trying to communicate with wants to receive it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just it, 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 it's really, you know, it's, it, 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 at some level, it becomes almost second nature, subconscious, because now I, I have to really think about it when I'm teaching people who've never really thought about this concept. I have to kind of go back and think about how I came to this point, but I don't really think about it anymore because, as a matter of fact, when I get, I get on a call with someone, I don't even have to look at them. If I'm not on a Zoom, if I'm on a physical phone call, and I, and I'm communicating. I can tell within no more than two minutes uh, who they are. You know, at least in the sound, sense of top or bottom. And then we start. You know, then I can start at least communicating to them the way I think that they want to receive communication. And then as we parse their issues out from a coaching or consulting uh, standpoint, then I can drill down even further. But typically, the people who come on, you know, and work with me, I typically have them take a disc test. So if they've never done it before. So I know where they're coming from. And then that way, when I meet with them, I don't waste time. You know, I don't waste time. Like if I meet with you and you are C, my, my best friend is a C and he's worked in the pharmaceutical industry for years and he's rolled out hundred million dollar products in this industry. So he knows how to sell, but he's not a typical salesperson. He's a doctor of pharma, you know? So when he talks, he's like, he talks like a doctor, you know, he's like, well, we have to really look at that report you know we have to analyze this and we have to think through this that's the way he communicates well if i know you're a c when i come to meet with you i better be ready to go really drill down on every little detail because that's what's important to you that's not important to me every little detail i don't care about i care about the whole forest not the individual trees and so but in coaching people are in winning clients you need to know if they want to see every individual tree or if they're forest people, right? It's so true. <clears throat> how often would you, do you, do you ask client that or customer that, how do you like to receive information? Is that a smart thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'll tell you what, they will tell you, you know, you have not because you ask not, right? So, when you when you when you first start getting with a client a new client especially the one of the top things that we always did was look because we had contracts you know most people do so we had either we had two different types of business i had hundreds of clients in, in two different regions and then i had 30 clients in a couple of regions uh and they the 30 client bill was like a half a million to million dollar contracts and the hundreds of clients would be two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month contracts. So it was different, different types of businesses. They were all connected, but they were a little bit different in the way they were written. So once we would go to contract with people, this is the perfect time to do that. Once you first start with a client, say, look, I realize what the contract says, but as a company owner or individual, however you would word it in your organization, we really like going above and beyond. Well, Number one, people love that. So you're setting the conversation up, right? So in doing that, we realize that you have a certain style of the way you want to be communicated to. And I just say it point blank, just like that. And we'd really like to know that. So tell me how you'd like to receive as these, this project is unfolding. How do you want to stay in the loop of communications with me so that we make sure that we're hitting all your hot buttons? And I've just opened the conversation up like that. And you'll find out they won't come out and tell you exactly like I'm a C. I want to know bullet points. They, they won't do that. But what they will do is they'll say, you know what? I just want to know the overall project is taken care of. Well, that immediately tells me they're looking at the forest and not the trees. They do not want you calling them and giving them every little detail. On the other hand, if it's Stephen and I do a contract with Stephen, he's going to tell me, you know what? These, this is critical for our company. And I want to know the individual details that as we're moving forward. Well, that tells me when I when I communicate with him, I don't need to give him bullet points. I better give him paragraphs about what's happening. And then you figure that whole process out in the beginning. There's no use. And lo people love, look, if I come to you and you're spending money with me and I'm trying to help you build whatever you're building, let's just use that. Do you not want me to ask you how you'd like to receive communication? I mean, that's like... Dude, that's the ultimate in building rapport with people. It's because like, I don't want to come across like I know everything, even though I'm the expert you're hiring over here. I want to come into your world and give you the things you need, not what I think you need. 
I love it. Well, Don, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Where can people learn more about you? How can people engage with you? The best way you can check out my website is www.donwlong.com. There's a place to contact me there. Um, love to uh, love to chat with any of your uh, viewers and audience. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Don your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to donwlong.com and check out the great resources. And I think that uh, we can all use a, a, a metamorphosis in certain aspects of our lives and our business and then with our teams. So if there's an opportunity, check it out. Thanks again, Don. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And until next time, remember... Do your part by doing your best.